Hi YouTubers, I just wanted to do just a really quick video. Um, last night I was sat here and I thought, oh, I'll make a, a sea dragon. I got some Arteza left, very small amounts because you can't buy it individually, which is really aggravating because I would buy and probably swap over to the Arteza um, if it was sold individually, but they don't do it and it's so frustrating. Anyway, I was sat here and thought, what could I use all these last bits for? Of course, being the last pieces, you're limited on colour, which is a big, big issue, really. Um, so I thought, I'll make a, a sea dragon. Never made one before, I thought I'd give it a go. So I started doing it. Got all these fins done, if you can see them. Very, very pleased. I will show you in a minute how to do these um, and this and then I popped it in the oven for the specialated time which is I think I haven't got the instructions anymore because it's not on the box I don't think no so I've got nothing to go by and I think I might have got the times wrong but I put it in for 165 which I'm sure is what the RT's are timing is and um, I put it in it says anything from I thought I thought it said between 15 and minutes and half an hour on 165. However, this poor little fella got toasted. It happens to us all. I'm absolutely gutted because he's really lovely. So I thought we'd have a go at doing it. I mean, I've got all these bits left over in the Arteza. But the trouble is, it's all that sort of colour. It, it's not something that I think... I want to do a dragon in that colour, I don't want to do it. So what I'm going to do is put all this to one side and I'm going to try it in the Fimo. Okay, so let me put all this to one side. I might have a go at an elephant or something perhaps because I've got a lot of grey left in that just to finish it off. Right, okay, let me see what colours we've got then. Uh, I've got some nice purples actually. So... We've got some really nice purple there, so I think perhaps we'll do a purple one. Okay, I'm just gonna shred it. Yeah, I'll put this little fella up here so we know what we've got to do. What a shame. Okay, so at the moment I'm just slicing it. This was left over from a previous project ages and ages ago, so it's really pretty inside. If you can see that, really lovely, but just not something really I might keep a piece of it for a pendant let me find a really nice piece mm, that bit's nice I'll pop it up there and we'll do a pendant at a, at a different date um, in a different video this is just some more of this colour it's just been mixed up so I'm just going to pop it through the pasta machine and we'll see what we've got Ooh. The Fimo clay is, is much, much like a more of a tougher clay um, as against the Arteza. It's quite soft. Immediately, as soon as you pick it up, you don't have to do much to it to get it so that it's ready to be used. Whereas the Fimo is quite, um, it's quite stiff. Thank goodness for pasta machines, eh? So I haven't made one of these in in Fimo but I have made I will show you what I did make which I will be doing a video on okay so it's just conditioning that's all I'm doing just conditioning it on the biggest setting that's what I'm using it's just only because that's what my pasta machine set on or just being lazy and haven't changed it I will change it to number three there we go I usually do my conditioning on a number three I, it seems to work the best um, and it's, it seems to be the quickest to get it so that it's nice and... Oh, there's some beautiful lines coming out in this. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that. Okay, so let's put those two bits together. I'm not really worried about having lovely lines. Although it would be nice. Perhaps I'll not do that bit anymore. And then these are just the plain purple. Okay. 
which have got glitter in, I've just noticed, with the sunshine shining on it. These were, like I said, scrap pieces left over from previous things that I've done. So, there could be all sorts in it. I'm a bit of a, a, a glitter magnet, shall we say. I like anything that sparkles. Sorry, folks, I know I'm sort of to the side at the moment. I will be there in a sec. Okay, so here we go. So we've got reconditioned all our clay. So we're going to roll it up into a really nice ball. And what I want to do is, last night I put the eyes, the head on um, separately. If you can see that, there's a gap at the back. It just kind of looks like it's been plopped on, which I suppose it has, really. So I don't want to do that again. So I'm going to try and get the head. So the head, the body and the tail all in one go. So let's give it a go. That is so bad. When it went in the oven, folks, it was all of these colours. It was nice and bright. Um, now, if you can see him, how dark he is. And I had to peel his horns off, which when they went in the oven and stood up, and when they came out, they were down here, or floppy where they'd mounted. So you can see a little bit of the colour of him there, look. So I don't know why, whether I got the times wrong. Um, I don't think I did, but it could be my oven. What you need to do, which I will be purchasing, is a... Um, it's like a temperature thing that goes inside your oven. So you can double check the heat of your oven settings. I'm thinking that mine probably burns a little bit hotter than than what it sort of says on the tin. So if I put it on 160 degrees, which I'm sure that's what it is, 160 or 165, um, it, the, it, it definitely burns hotter. Okay, so we're just going to roll it. We want one end the tail and one end the head. So we don't want a big head, so we're just going to do... We've got to make sure he's got a nice size neck. And you can pull it off, don't forget. If you're not happy with what's going on. I might actually use that end for the tail. It's quite nice. It's a lot longer than the other end. So you're just getting your basic shape first. Check for any air bubbles, like I've got one there, look. That will cause loads of trouble. So we just pop it and just tuck it over. I think the Arteza will probably be better to use for this. Uh, not the Arteza, the, the Fimo. Because it's a, a tougher clay. So, but what I like about the Arteza is when you make something in the Arteza and you go to put and place it onto the item that you've made, it just sticks immediately. There's no umming and ahhing about it or anything like that. It just sticks beautifully. Right. Let's make sure he's got a bit of a neck going on there. Oh, there's a bit much of a neck. Right, now get the shape of the face how you want it. Right, I know that's too long for what I like. This is personal choice, personal preference, whatever it is you want to do. I don't like the noses and the faces too long because I'm not making a really big, I'm sorry, really big sort of one. I only really wanted to do it to show you how I do the fins. That was all. Okay. So just squeeze him a little bit of a face. Actually, I'm quite happy with that. You can kind of handle the, the femo a little bit more than you can. The Arteza, if you pick the Arteza up, it leaves marks in it. So that's obviously a, a good thing and a, a plus a sort of the Fimo. I love Fimo. I have lots and lots and lots of Fimo. Um, I think it's great. Okay. So I'm just straightening out his neck. I don't want any ridges. That's definitely a much better neck rather than placing it on like I did last night. Okay, so there's his head. I'm happy with that. If you're not happy, just push it down a little bit if you don't like it too thin. But I think a neck should be a neck, so that's, again, personal choice, personal preference. Okay, so we're just going to squeeze it a little bit there. Okay, 
make it as thin as you want or as long as you want whatever you you sort of want to do for your tail I like a long tail so we're going to go for a long tail if you find that it's too long you can just you can cut it off you can do whatever you want to do oh something's going on inside my tail it's got air in there right that's not going to work then is it okay so we're just going to have a tail this long now which is still good enough okay so I want mine to stand up so I do mine like that okay now I like mine to have a fat belly so just kind of mould it so that it's kind of sitting back on itself a little bit like that sort of shape but try and sort of squeeze it a little bit thinner if you need to don't want any lumps and bumps in it. Try and get that out. And what I did yesterday was I don't like um, not having a slope down to his bottom. So I just peeled a bit off yesterday. Like so. I'm not entirely sure that I actually like the size and shape of his body. Let's push that in there, I think, perhaps. Then we could put some back legs on him, couldn't we? Right. We don't want him to be too big. We just want to do a little one today. I will show the other dragon that I do. Um, I managed to do yesterday or the day before, which I will be doing a um, how to. How I did it anyway. I will just show you. Okay, so now I've got a lot of lumps and bumps in mine now. So just smoothing down. Now see this crease here? I don't like that. So we're just going to pop a little piece in there. You only want a little piece. Just wiggle it around in your hands and warm it up. Otherwise, it'll be hard and it won't go in. Okay, so you just get it into a little bit of a, a liney, bubbly kind of, and just push it in there, and then just literally smooth your edges down, which is actually easier to do with the uh, Fimo, because if you try and do it with the RT user, like I say, it bruises in other places, so where you're repairing one place or getting it so that you like the one place, you're actually damaging another place. So it's quite difficult. Okay. Here we go. I might, yeah, put some back, back legs on it. I don't know. We'll see. You don't really have back legs, do you, if you've, if you've got sort of fins and whatnot. Mm. Okay. There we go. That's not too bad. I think he looks quite good actually. <coughs> it's so frustrating because some days I get up and I think, oh yeah, I'm really in the mood for it and making stuff and, and whatnot. And then I just can't do it because of my arthritis. Some days I can't pick up anything at all. I just shaved his nose off a little bit because I'm not so keen on such a large nose. That's it, it's brought his head back into line with his body. It's up to you what sort of shapes you want. I like a bit of a pointy shape. If you can see, that's a bit... It's quite a simple shape. Uh, I think it looks alright. Okay. And there we go. And just straighten it. Don't worry too much because it's going to be covered over with um, other bits. Okay. Make sure he's sort of pretty sturdy. 
because you don't want them to fall over. I mean, you can put wings on these ones, you can literally do anything you want. So, doesn't even have to have fins on him if you don't want fins on him. Sorry about my breathing folks, I have I'm a terrible heavy breather. You don't realise it and then it's not until you sort of watch a video but you realise how how heavy breathing that you are. Right, I think that's a fairly good where we wanna be. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to mix some colours to make his fins. Right, because he's the purple colour, what colour should we use? Ooh, got some pink. That's quite a nice, strange colour, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's a different kind of pink. That's, this is... Um, it's like a, a dusky pink, this one. Don't want huge amounts of it. This little bit, because we're just going to make his fins in that now. And I think I might put some white in there. Which other ones I've got? What's that? It's nice, isn't it? I think we'll use a bit of that. Yeah, I think so. It's like a very pale silver. Ooh, very hard silver. Right, for anybody who's fresh out there starting on using clay, Fimo clay is great. It has, when you open a packet, the label here on the back, if you peel that off, they make it so that that's what you can use to reseal it. Which with Fimo clay, you don't have to worry about it going hard. But you do want to try and keep it clean. So you don't want it to open to the elements. It's a bit fiddly some oh dear, listen the building around here somewhere. I do apologise. Okay. Let's stick that over there like that. There we go. Right. Okay, so I'm just gonna go along, cut this up, and then I'm just gonna to each one. Okay. Try and keep them separate, she says. Well, that's quite that's lovely, that um, dusky pink one. I buy all these colours because I see them and I think, oh, that's nice. And I could use it for that and I could use it for that. And actually, I haven't used it, I've owned it ages. Hmm. And now I think, oh, I've used half of it. I must get some more because I like it so much. I'm sure that's the same as every other FEMO clay user. Can't have too much FEMO. Okay, so there's one. Let's do the next one. Sorry about my squeaky pasta machine. my chunky arm that you can see. There we go. That's it. And then we'll just do this very pale silver. I like this. 
it was very crumbly. That's the first time I've opened the pale silver, so just sort of got to take a minute just to give it what it needs and just recondition it. What we're going to try and do is do and mingle the colours from one to the next. Um, an ombre. Sorry, YouTubers, I won't be a moment. I didn't even think I should have done this before we started. There we go. Right, okay. So we're going to roll them up into little balls. My desk is disgustingly dirty, look. That's the only other trouble with using clay. It gets into everything. Okay. Nice tight ball. I've managed to pick up some pink. Let's cut that out so I don't want to mix it yet. There we go. I have a little tub, no matter how small the pieces are, I always collect them because I mix them up one day and use them for, me, for them, like inserts or whatever it is that I need. So it's definitely worth doing. So with this bit, you can either do it however you want to set your colours. From dark to light, from... Uh, if you don't want your pinks next to a dark pink, or it's entirely up to you really, however you want to set it. So, I think I'm going to go from like dark to light. <laughs> Try and sort of give it a good squidge about because it will just close up any, any holes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You probably won't use it all in all fairness. So that's what we've got. I'm just going to cut this piece down. Because I know we won't need all that. Just give it a squeeze. We won't use all of that either. So we're just going to roll it out. What you do want to do is make sure you do enough to cover if you want to do straight down his back, tail fins, I mean it's entirely up to you. Just make sure you do do enough and you've got enough. So, right, roll them into sausages is the first thing. You don't want them too thick, but you don't want them thin. Okay, so that's where I like to be with that. So I'll just roll the next one out. Hopefully the, the coffee fairy will be here soon. I know he's listening. Okay, so we just put them next to each other. Cut off any excess, because you don't want to contaminate. Okay. We'll do this next one. And then we'll put them into position of where we want them in a minute. Make sure that they're all the, roughly the same sort of size. You don't want to waste any. And then just put the pieces that you're not using over to one side so they don't get caught up in it. You can use more than this colours if you want to, or you can use less. It's entirely up to you. This is what I like about this sort of thing. I have a thing about dragons. Um, I'll show you the dragon in a bit, which one will be probably one of my next videos. Um, Try and make them all the same sort of size if you can. I've made that one a bit smaller. Or thinner, shall we say. That'll do. Okay. So now we have all our colours. Like so. Now I'm going to have dark. Leading into that colour. The dusky pink. Then the lighter pink. And then the almost white. Which has now got... A line of purple in it. This is why it's imperative, ladies and gentlemen, that you keep your desk clean. Right, 
got Pussycat coming over. Princess Poppy. Okay. Here we go. Right. So just sort of tap them together, squish them down. You want them nice and tight together. Try and keep them the right sort of size. We're going to run these through the pasta machine anyway. I like to run them through at number four, which isn't the tightest one, the tightest, the the squishy, the thinnest one, but it is not far. I think we've got nine settings, or six or seven settings, something like that. Okay. Now, just rub a piece of paper over it and, and sort of burnish it, because you, you don't want to, you just want to sort of mix so that they're sort of well stuck together. Okay, there we go. I'm going to actually pull these up and I'm going to turn them over to make sure they're nice and burnished on the other side. Oh, look at the pink one in that one. I don't suppose anybody will see it at the end of it anyway. But it's all mixed. Okay. okay, so I'm going to run it through the pasta machine. You want to keep it long ways. So run it through that way. So when it comes out it's really long. Like so. All right. Okay. Push all the other pieces out of the way. And now we're going to fold in half. Make sure you line up the colours because the ombre won't work otherwise. And tap it down. And do it again. I'm going to cut those ends off because they're not really doing anything. So I can separate them and put them back to their actual colours so they don't get mixed up. Okay. I'm just sort of give it a tap down. And I'm going to fold it over once more so it's sort of. If you can see that. Okay, if it comes apart like it's doing, just kind of squeeze it back together as best you can. I like to do my sides like that, otherwise it, um, you end up losing some of the edges because they get so sort of mucky. Not mucky, but mixed, mixed up. Scruffy, that's a better word, scruffy. Okay, so here we go. So I'm about to put that back through again on my number four. Okay, keeping it long ways again, so like that, long ways again, right this time I'm going to roll it, or no, let's fold this one, we'll roll the next one, I don't really suppose it makes much difference, but I think we'll do, keeping your colours well lined up ladies and gentlemen, like so. And again, I'm going to cut that end off. I won't be able to do anything with that and separate it this time. But it's just kind of there doing nothing. Okay, so let's tuck that down again. Like so. And again, the other side. Just make sure there's no air bubbles in it. Okay, I'm squeezing it like so. I'm sort of pulling it apart a little bit like that, long ways like that. So that's what we're left with. 
So we're going to put it back through the pasta machine in the same um, sort of thickness. So it's getting wider because you don't want it all that sort of length. Otherwise, if you want to do something with it, you won't be able to. Right, I'm going to roll this one. So when you start it, it's very important that you make sure you roll it as tight as you can. Otherwise, you'll end up with a big air bubble in that middle. Okay, just rolling it nicely. Make sure you keep your edges uh, nice and tight and you roll it. And keep your lines, keep to your lines. That's it. So like so. Okay, so now I've got a nice roll of it, look. So I'm going to push it down on the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to make sure I'm nice and... Try and get as much sort of nice edging as you can. It's not always very easy. It doesn't always work. But if you have a little go at it to start with, then hopefully it doesn't grow into something massively where you can't use it. So the other option is to just shave the edge off if you wanted to. But I'm always a bit dubious about doing that. Because you're technically shaving off the edge, so you're losing part of one of the colours. So, I mean, you're going to lose part of one of the colours anyway if you get to the other end and it's all done. And um, yeah, you're not going to use the raggedy edges, are you? Well, that's what you might do. It'd give a good, actually, it'd probably give a good um, edge in for a fin. Okay, so there we go. Got it in a roll. I'm going to flatten it out now, so we can get it through the pasta machine. I think this is probably going to be the last one that we need to do. So just squish it down so it fits in. I like to pull mine wide a little bit. I don't want it too thick, otherwise the tail will end up too too wide and you won't be able to get the full ombre in there. Right, I'm going to roll it through again. And if you can see that, we've got a couple of air bubbles. Sometimes it's very difficult not to get them. Just pop them. Because you won't be able to do anything with them otherwise. And they'll come back and haunt you. I hate air bubbles. Okay, and they just gently rub them and they disappear, like so. Okay, now I'm really happy with the colours that I've got there. Um, any little Im imperfections, just kind of rub them out. Not so sure what's going on with this edge. Not sure that I like that. Mm. What I might do is just roll it, or might fold it and put it in again once more. Just to see. The trouble is, there's a fine line between stopping when you're done and ending up doing too much and losing the ombre. So do be careful. I'm a nightmare, I've got to admit. Okay, so we're on the same setting again. Mm. What I might not do is use, I might not use that purple side. I'm very, very happy with this side, this bit. I don't like this line here. So I'm just going to use these bits here. Okay. So you don't want to make them too big to start with, the fins. We're going to do the tail fin first. Okay. So just using just a plain point at all, just map out where you want your tail fin to come. So you want it to be flat on the bottom, like so. I always cut mine too big, always do. Like so. But don't forget you need to keep this side of it because and any bits that's left over. It might be too big, you know. Let's do it. If you don't keep it you won't be able to match up the um the other fins. Okay. So 
so once you've cut it just lift that up and then very very carefully place that somewhere where it's not going to get any lines like I've, I've drawn a line in there with the light with the uh, pointer the my pin pin tool when I drew my line and now it's left a line in it that I've not stuck to if you can see that just gently rub over it because you will use air you, you need to conserve as much of this as possible because you are going to use it okay so now we're left with this which is going to be my tail fin so I'm just going to rub rub over it and bur burnish it I, I just want to calm the edges down get it so it's nice and sort of soft okay there we go nice lovely colouring nice and soft just do the edges okay so now it's nice and stuck to the table which is another reason I like to burnish it with paper get your point your tool you get yourself to the side of it and then just gently drag the over like that and then just repeatedly do that can you see how it's doing the edge it's like pulling the edges out do it down the sides as well because obviously it's a tail fin but see don't rush it just take your time and it will just fall into place What a lovely sunny day it is. Freezy, freezy out there though. Right, this is the first time I've done this with the um, Vimo. It's not kind of, you don't want to push too hard. You just kind of want to mark it, but not cut through it. It's definitely not doing what uh, the Arteza did. I think it's because the Arteza is such a, a softer To try and get the, the lumps and the tail one I didn't worry about doing the other side because it's going to be flat anyway but when I come to doing the other bits like the, the mane down the back of the head and that and down his back, you have to do both sides ok I think that's good right use your knife to pick it up because you'll never get it off the board there you go and that's what you've got. If you can see those edges. The Arteza was definitely a softer edge. Right, okay. Now we're going to try and fold it. So. I always turn it round and start this end. Ooh, and drop it. And start this end. Tuck it in. Making the folds really, really fine. And when you do it, try and get the rest of the fin to fold. So like pleat it, is what you're trying to do. Like so. Now with your pointy tool, just try and get your lines in there. This is really quite a fiddly job. I'm not going to lie to you, but it is definitely worth fiddling about. So if you can see that, there's a tail fin now. Now if you wanted to, you could go along and just do some more of these, but you, you've got to be careful you don't um, pull them off if you like. You don't want it to, you just want to gently... in doing so you might be able to straighten out the sides to where you've done it right now obviously this is too big here so I push it down into a point and with my knife I take it at an angle like so I just pull off the excess and then again I do it again because I want it to be So, 
and then come over here and what I'm going to do oh, a bit big perhaps, is just make that a bit of an arc there so it just kind of fits over the tail the tail end like that look and just push it on if you're having trouble getting it to stick use some liquid glue um, whatever you've got to hand and you can turn it over as well just make sure it's well tucked down around the sides okay so that is the first one okay and then just sort of stick it to how you want to having the fins up um, slightly you don't want it out too far because you've not um, done the underside so you just kind of keep it so it's kind of like like that I think is nice that's how I'm going to use mine anyway okay so there's the first one done well done so now I like to do a couple of them so I'm going to bring this back over here what I might do is take the bottle, oh look, the fairy's been the coffee fairy. <coughs> that served me right, I just choked. Right. Now I like to put a, a few smaller ones. So I should do another big one there, which will hang here. And then a little one and a little one there. So we might be able to use these as it as I do them should we do another biggish one I'm going to use this this time the big old sort of colour I might make this one a little bit longer and thinner actually I think that's probably the same size as the other one oh, it's not quite as far so I want to get as many as I can out of this ombre otherwise I will lose and won't be able to um, match it back up. Okay. We have got enough here to do another one, so I'm not too worried. As long as you get the colours in the same place, you should be all right. Okay. So I'm just going to do what we did before. Okay. Soften down your, oh. soften down your edges. Got a little blob of uh, purple in the middle there. You probably won't be able to see it. Then with your pointy tool again, just gently pulling it out, like so. Okay, nice and slowly. You're not digging it in as per se, you're not trying to cut it, you're just trying to mark it, that's all. I'm just trying to sort of unneaten the edges. See, nice and slow. It's actually, I quite like doing this bit, I find it quite therapeutic. I don't know why, but I do like it. I'm going to do this dragon in a two-parter, so I'm going to get all the fins done for and everything, and then we'll come back and, and do the rest in another video. Okay. Nice. Get those edges really sort of flared out, not cut out. I mean, they're going to split because they're thin it's inevitable but I think that adds it all to adds to the, uh, the effect okay all right yeah what we'll do is we'll get the fins done and then we'll get eyeball holes and then I think he's going to go I'm going to put him in the oven 
because it's very difficult to work with when you've got such loose items. So like the um, the fins, it's really hard to work and not sort of damage them. You get them where you want them and then you've only got to touch them and then you're back up to square one. Okay, so let's have a look now. So we're on our second big fin, or our tail fin. So we're going to start and, and pleat it again. So going down, back up, back down. And just try and pleat it as you go. Not kind of damaging the edging that you've just done. It's very difficult and like I say, very, very, very fiddly. Right, I don't want that to come back up, so I'm going to keep it and tuck it around. So just tuck your edge, tuck your pleats in. This Fimo is definitely harder to use than the, the Arteza, certainly. Right, so there's lots I'm going to cut off this one to start with. So let's pop that over there. Look at that, that's lovely isn't it? Right, I'm going to cut that end off and then I'm going to make an arch like I did last time. Just with a, a small paintbrush will do it. So I'm just going to flatten it back down and then just pop it over the end of that. Just so it's got a little arch in it so it will sit on his tail. So this one we want um, to sit around about here, I think, because it's kind of part of his tail. Okay, so this one I'm going to just rub up his tail. I don't know whether to do a third one. I'll just leave him with two. Of them. This one I did three. So I did one further up here. I do like it. Hmm. Okay. If you want to just rough up the end of his tail again, put your finger underneath it and just give it a, a bit of a rough up, like so. Like so. Right, I'm going to do a small one, I think, to go on that end. Um, I might do this bit here, in here, because I'm only going to do a small one, and then that's just keeping and making sure, like I say, we're using as much of it as we can, because you don't want to waste it because you've done all this beautiful work. Okay. Just straighten up your edges. Oh dear, that is one truly weird. Um, got a dog hair in it. Okay, so what you need to do is just sort of straighten up some edging. It doesn't have to be perfect, but obviously, being a mermaid tail, they're quite rounded. Okay, a little pile of bits going on here, which will go into my bit drawer. I have got this little one as well, which I will use, because I like this. This was cut off the end. Do you remember we cut it off the end? I'm going to make that into a little one, I think. That was going to go further up the tail. We'll see what we get left with um, in a minute. At the moment, we're doing all right. We've got plenty to be getting along with. This one's just going to be a little one, that I think. Okay. Right, that's actually the wrong way around because I'm a Wally. There you go. Let's turn it round. 
Actually, I might take this opportunity just to wipe out my desk over. Get any leftover bits off. Always a good idea. Okay. Even the little leftover bits like that, I gather up and pop back in. Because it's all female clay, it's all the same colour. So it's what we've been using this morning. It's just in a very... Oh no, that's not better. Not going to work. In the bit it goes. Right, so... Just flatten your edges down slightly. So it's a nice edge. And... Same again. Not cutting it, you're just marking it. Okay. Steady to start with. Some people use matchsticks. You don't have to have one of these. You can just use matchstick. Um, or, well, not a matchstick, a cocktail stick. Anything with a point on it, really. I suppose you could use... I wouldn't want to use the back of my knife because it would cut straight through, even with the back. Um, you could even get some pins. I've seen people on Facebook, uh, not Facebook, YouTube, making pin tools. I mean, I bought this was a set I got off of um, Amazon. I think it was like eight pounds. It come in a box like this, and I've got loads of bits in there. I've got. I've added bits to it now. I've got a metal straw and everything. All in there. But it came with three pin tools. This fantastic little thing. You can see that. It's good for hair. Um, I keep my my blades and that in there as well. I've got a seven year old who likes to mess about on my desk. And obviously there's certain things I don't want her to have and that's one of them. And my granddaughter comes in and at 18 months old. She makes a beeline for my desk so I have to be a little bit careful. So I always try and keep blades and everything all put away. So and that pink box just works really well. But I think that was um, eight pounds something for the pink box. Three of these, the hair and the hair one, and the box. So, which is well worth having because, like I say, I keep my knives and that in there, and my, um, all my blades, which is good. Do you know what children are? Inquisitive. My daughter especially. Actually, the purple we're using is, she asked me one evening if she could come and sit and sort of have a play about with some clay. And I said, yeah, go on. In, you know, thinking, oh, bless her. Into the other room, help yourself, sort of thing. When I come in in the morning, she had not only trashed my desk, which was fine. That doesn't bother me. Um, I like to encourage creativity. Uh, that's a big one. But she'd mixed a load of my female clay together and I'd got the biggest ball of purple female clay that you ever did see, which is the purple we're using today. I'm still using it. That was about eight weeks ago. So, do be careful. <laughs> I wouldn't change it. She's very creative. Gives me ideas sometimes. Okay, so that, there's our next one. <coughs> Another good way of clearing up your desk if it's got little bits on it is get a little piece of uh, rubber, uh, like um, out of your, your bits box and just roll it around your desk. That'll pick up any little bits that you don't want. And, you, and well, I suppose you're not wasting it either then. You're kind of adding it all together, but it should pick up any little bits that are on your desk still. I can already feel that that has made a big difference just on the bits. Just literally roll it around your desk. So it's well worth doing. I mean, people keep pieces of scrap for that individual job. I like to use a piece of scrap, which then I put into my scrap drawer and use on something else. Um, I'm about... I like things like that. I like to... No wastage. So, you're going to pleat it again. Exactly the same way. Nice tight pleats. Trying to keep the the pleating 
in the femo as you do it. So back up and then I'm going back down once. Okay, so there's my next one. Oh, look at the sun coming through. If you can see that now. It's easier if I bring it up. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to squish the top down because I don't want all that. And we can use that on something else. And now that's part of the white one. As you start to sort of chop little bits off, you'll find that they're the same colour as certain bits. So you can just add it back to it. Okay, using your fine paint brush, I'm going to make a little arc on it because then it will just sit neatly on the tail, like so. And then we're going to take it off of there and we're just going to add it wherever you want it to go. Now I want mine to go a little bit further down the tail, so I'm just going to, okay, you don't want to sort of push this down too much because it is a completely different colour. I should have thought about that really as a top one. Actually I might take that off and use that one further up because of the colour. Not very clever, not one of my wisest choices. The only way you could do that I think is to put a cover over the top. Let's have a look and see if we can put because I want to put it there but obviously I don't want the white because you can't mix, you can't sort of rub it in. So let's have a look and see what we can do. Let's cut that end off there because I've made it all dodgy now. Right now you've got oh, I've got some actually already rolled out there. Look, I'm going to use this is completely. I've never done this before, ladies and gentlemen. But we there's just proves there's always a way around things. And it's personal preference, it's personal choice. I don't like the way that was going to look. So I'm just going to put a piece of edge in. Let me get rid of those bits. Over this bit here. So I'm going to roll it out pretty or put it through the passing machine. Probably on its thinnest setting. Yeah, there we go. Like so, and then just kind of gonna fold it in half because that is extremely thin and fiddly. Ah, okay, and then I'm just gonna lay it over the bottom because I really don't want the white going up the tail. Okay. Folded it underneath. Okay, and just pull it in. Smarten it up. That's better. Get in there now. Right, chop the very end off. Which is going to have to go because it's got a white centre. Okay, back to the uh, tip of Paintbrush. Oh, now I've still got a blinking white line. Let's try cutting that at an angle so it goes underneath. That's better. Oh, we've got one or two chances of it working. It would be really nice if it did. So we we'll try that again. There we go. That's better. And just sort of gently pull it over without sort of losing the shape of your tail. Like so. And then just put it, like I say, into the positions that you want it in. A nice sort of swirly kind of. Like so. So there you have it. There's the tail. Completed and done. Well, at the very tip of the tail anyway. Right, now I'm going to do some going up his back a little bit. Um, 
we just yeah so I want to go up his back a little bit so we're looking at going up up here so I just want to put one here and maybe one here so two small ones now we've got this left over which we could use as a very very small one to just tap it down I'm not too worried about shape wise it needs to be some sort of triangle otherwise it won't work but shape wise I'm not overly concerned about we're going to have the same problem again aren't we Right, let's put a piece on the end of that, I think. Let me put it through the plaster machine. Number three, number four. Oh, I've thrown it on the floor now. Okay. So I'm just going to add it. It's got dog hair. Anybody who's got dogs in the stands? It gets everywhere. So I'm just going to add that to the bottom of the ombre. I know it doesn't look and it's not ombre onto there, but I'm not overly worried about that sort of side of it, as long as it's not a completely different colour. Okay. Because otherwise it will just look completely out of place. So you get rid of your rough edges. I think that will work, I think. Some could say it's like wing in it. Others can say it's foresight. I'm going to call it foresight to think that I don't like that colour against the bottom. So with that in mind, when I cut the next ones, I will, I will do the darker colour sort of next. Or well, first that, that attaches. I don't know how the, the main fin is going to go on this because it's not like the Arteza, it just kind of sticks on. Okay, so start with your, your tool. Sorry, I know I'm working on. I'm terrible for it. Okay, remember you're marking, you're not cutting. husband probably wants to come in and play on the Xbox but doesn't want to come in and make any noise or I have to give him the look Love him. I'll pause it in a minute and see what he's doing let's see maybe sat in the kitchen Okay, so once you're happy, you get off the board. Remember, this is only going to be a little one. So you're going to do exactly the same. You're going to pleat it nice and tight, like so. And then you're going to try and fold the pleats into it, like what should be there. Use your, your pin tool if you have to. Oh, sorry, I'm out of screen there. Use your pin tool if you have to. You can get it so that you get some really good... Just dug my pin tool into it. There we go. You can get some good sort of lines and whatnot going on. Once you're happy, squeeze it because you don't want all that at the end. Cut it off and then I'm going to kind of stand up a little bit. Ooh, for a split second there, I thought I'd made it a lot worse than it actually is. But um, that's the nice thing about clay. It doesn't take much for you to kind of put it back to how it should be. Okay, so this one we're going to do... I want this one coming outwards. 
So I'm just going to pop it on and I'm just going to brush it down so it, it make, look, molds it into place. Still squeezing and making sure that it doesn't spread out too far, otherwise, then it looks like it's not meant to be there. And then just put it in a position that you like, like so. So, the next one I'm going to do is up here, I'm going to put one on the inside here, and then I'm going to do down his, his neck, right. So, we're ready to cut from here again, I think. So, because I only want another small one, I think I'm going to use this side bit here, if you can see that. Yeah, there. And keep this just for his fin, for the bit down the back of his neck. Okay. Hmm. See, now I've got thinking. A longer, shorter one would be better for up his neck, wouldn't it? Down that bit. So into there, into there. If we did... Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just trying to think. What does it look like on the back? Mm. No, I don't like that. Mm. I think I might keep that bit there for his, his neck. His neck's not going to be a very big piece. So if we did his next one here. A bit thinner perhaps. And we'll put that that bit on the end again. Because I, I like that, that darker bit on the end. Crush those bits yet because you might find something else that we want to use them for. It depends what you want to do. Right. Oh, I can't put that through because otherwise, then it'd be too small, wouldn't it? Okay, we're just going to put that on on the end so when we put it on the body, it's all the same colour. Okay, right, let's cut the sides off. Okay. Like so. Don't want a rough end on that. Right. So let's just turn that over. Make sure it's all right. That's a good thing about this side, um, doing the tails, because nobody's going to see the underside of them. So when you come to the fins down the back of the neck, you've got to be a little bit careful. Okay. There we go. Nice and smooth. So now we're going to use... Remember, scoring it, marking it, not cutting it. That's probably annoying everybody, I keep saying that. But this really is a simple technique. Very easy to do. Anybody could do it. <coughs> and it's so effective. It really is. It's a really lovely, effective way of, of doing them. I've definitely got to think about dragons because the next video 
I make after this next one because we're going to do this one finish it off the video popping it in the oven and then I will do number part two I will put the face and the horns and I don't know what on whatever we find that we want to use I think that's what I like about the dragons there are no hard and fast rules you can do whatever you like what I do some people might not like you do what you like it's absolutely fine he's your dragon but this really is a good easy technique for anybody to do anybody could have a go at it when you've done them ladies and gentlemen do send me a photo and put it in the um, comments I'd love to see what you're having a go at it doesn't have to be a dragon whatever clay projects you're doing I'd love to see pictures and uh, get some inspiration from other people as well I'd like to have a go perhaps at something that somebody else is doing sometimes I sit here and it's like a blank canvas and I don't really know what to do which is how I ended up learning to, to do the uh, the fins. Okay, so this is going to be a fairly long one. Well, how can that go from being sunshine? Okay, you can put them apart a bit. Oh, not that far apart. Just split mine, but I suppose it doesn't matter. Okay, night no, and Constantina it again. So it's pleating. Oh, it's going to rain, I think. And down. Try and get the whole thing to go down if you can. Back up. The female in that respect is actually a little bit easier, I think, to Constantina. Because it's it's very forgiving. And there you go. How beautiful is that? There you go. If you can see that one, it's very pretty and sparkly. I like grey and pink together. I think they're probably one of my favourite colours when they're together. Okay, so we're just going to squidge down just a little bit, and get some of that little off. I don't want to squidge this one too much because I want to make sure we keep the, the the purple on there. So we get our paintbrush. Now normally I would paint, uh, use, um, oh my goodness, my brain's gone blank. Normally I would use uh, mica powders before I put it in the oven. But to be honest, I quite like the effects I'm getting off of the Fimo with all the, the sparkle. If I use any um, mica powders, I will lose that shine, that sparkle, because it will just kind of hide it. Okay, so this is what we've got now, ladies and gentlemen. I finished his tail, but as far as I'm happy with that, if you can see, it just looks really lovely. Okay, so the back of his neck. Now, it's up to you where you want to do it. I like to just in on the head, just caught with the way in the back of the head, down the back of the neck, and stop just after the neckline. So if you can see from the side, it's very difficult now. So starting about there, finishing about there. So it's not massive, but I do like to do something. So let's have a look. I want to go along the same theme as what we've already done, so it matches. So these are the bits we kept, wasn't it? For that. Just wondering whether we should do. I might do a little bit of these in between. Maybe we could double we could double stick them. That might be a nice way of doing it actually. Okay, let me show you what I'm thinking. So let's cut these. Like this. Now I'm not going to cut them much more than what they are now. Because I want some really irregular shapes. Okay. So I'm going to pretty much keep it 
as they are. Let's unmute my door. Okay. Put them over there. Right, because we're keeping these, we're not going to cut much off. So I'm just going to tuck it all back on. So we're going to go over it with paper. Okay, same on the other one. Okay, right. So I'm going to do exactly the same again. Oh, oh, Wally, I did it the wrong way around. So I want the darker colour at the bottom. That's what's going to be attached to his neck. So I'm just going to do the same again. Throw out the sides as well. It's quite a long piece. I'm hoping that this will be... It might be too long actually. I'm not going to cut it. I can cut it when we're done. If we feel that... If we want to do... Um, if you want it any longer, that'd be all right. Okay. So I'm going to do both of them because I want to pick, really. And what I was thinking was we could go back to back. Would be quite nice, wouldn't it? too long. I might cut the very bottom of that off a little bit. Just a little bit there. Because it's very, very long. Okay. And I'll do the same on that one before I even start it. No point in starting something. But we're just going to cut off. Right. Try and keep to the same length, which that is very, very close. Which works for me. Okay. And remember, you're not cutting, you're just like um, marking, marking the clay. Don't forget to go out the sides. Like so. Not deep enough to cut, just deep enough to mark. What I might do is just thin that bottom out as well. So when we put it on, it should, although we can't, can we, if we're going to... Just try going different ways, but I don't like it. So I'll just get rid of those bits. Again, that's what I like about clay. You can try things out. If you don't like it, just go over it and it goes away. Okay. Right, so my theory was, let's get them out, we're going to have to, oh, right, we're going to concertina these, but I don't want to concertina them too much, so I'm going to do bigger concertinas this time. Let's see what happens with that. Oh, it's turned all horrible outside. Okay. So I'm going to loosen them off. I don't want them really stuck tight together. That's the sort of thing I'm going for, I think. I mean, it may not work at all. In which case, we just cut it off and start again. So let's do the same with this one. Bigger concertinas. You look, you can see where you're doing it, and then you don't want it, like I say, tight. So we're gonna pull it apart, like so, like a fan, a little bit like a fan, and then just push the bottom down 
and we're going to cut that off that piece anyway okay sorry about that ladies and gentlemen That's Now you can either do the other side as well, or you can put them together. Now my thoughts were to put them together, like that, but I don't know whether it looks a bit frilly. Yeah, I think that looks a bit too frilly for me. So what we'll do is, I think we're going to mark the other side. Okay, so we'll just do exactly the same again, but just this side, this side is going to be a bit more difficult because obviously... You've got it folded over and everything, but if you try and do all the bits you can see, you can put things underneath to do, see, like this. All you're doing is just so it looks the same, roughly. Okay. Like that. Right, I say that one's okay now. Don't forget to get the doodah to pull it off of, like that. And see how it's kind of both sides now. And just run it over because if you go in lightly over it, it'll just re remark it just quickly. Right, now getting this on, I've been thinking about this. This is bothering me a little bit because this is not going to be very easy. So it's a case of popping it on. I don't want it to look like a Mohican. Not that there's anything wrong with Mohicans, but that's just not the look I want to go for. Okay, actually that's going on all right. Try and get it central down the, the back of the neck. I don't know whether it's a bit big actually. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit big. So what I'm going to do is just cut down the middle. Kind of straighten it out as much as you can. Like so. And then so it's only half the size. Okay, and I'm going to get this one ready as well so that when I come to use it, I don't, I'm not sat there thinking, oh, who I wish I'd done. I've got it ready. Okay, so all we're doing again is just marking it. We're not even so much doing the edges on this one because you've already done them on the other side. So like that. Okay. <coughs> And we're going to cut it at the same length. Now, the reason I wanted to do them both together was to make sure that I get them roughly the same. I mean, it may be that I might not use this one, but... Oh, just pulled the end off. I want the choice to have that. So if I don't use it, it doesn't matter. But if I do use it, it's there if I need it. Right, so... I think that's still a little bit longer than the other one, isn't it? <coughs> Just a smidgen. There we go. Let's try that. Right, so I'm going to put this one on now. If I still feel it's too long, I will cut it again. Remember, you want to try and get it so it's kind of wavy. It's not so easy. Okay, something like that, I guess. This is something like as once you're happy with it, I, I suppose. That's. And if you use your tool, you should be able to Oh my goodness, this is not very easy Oh, 
Okay, let's try that. My goodness. If you're missing any lines, just pop them back in. It doesn't hurt. Obviously, this is going to go in the oven in a minute. So, it will stick then. And it won't have to worry about it coming off again. Right, now if you wanted to use the other one. I'll probably take that bit off. Want to carry it down, or if you want to do next to it, so it's actually I quite like it next to it. I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of pulling it apart from each other, but kind of sticking it down where you need to. Oh, this bit's not easy, ladies and gentlemen. We'll manage though. Make sure it's straight. By putting on numerous different pieces, it will take away the fact that if it's not straight, it won't matter because you won't be able to tell. Well, where's that bit I pulled off earlier? A little bit like that, that's perfect. We can go down this side, just pushing it down, and it should just attach itself. So, there's another bit that came off earlier, so we'll just straighten that out a little bit. I'm going to stick that. No rude comments, please, ladies and gentlemen. There. Mm, needs room. That's better. There we go. So just tuck some edges in. You don't want it. Like that bit there. You don't want it sort of very apparent that that's where it starts and that's where it finishes. I'm going to try and get rid of those edges. Uh -huh. My goodness. I don't know if I like that. No, I don't like it. So I'm going to peel that all off. I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to use these. And I'm going to cut them in the same shapes we had them before. Because I like that, these fins. And try doing it that way because I don't like what I've just seen. That's going to cause a problem, isn't it? Right, okay. So I've been sat and have a little think about it. And I have decided, I think I'm going to have a go at one more very small straight down the back using one of these, or a couple of these. If we can fit them together somehow, that would be really good. Like that, look. And then it's whichever bit, really, that we want to use. So just rub them together. Okay, let's move that one out of the way. I definitely wasn't very happy or very keen on the one that I did before. Okay. Now I can either have it going long ways up it or mm. right, I think what I'm going to do is have it that way so if we cut the jaggedy bottom off and then put that in there so we've got that and I think what I'm going to do is do it long ways, like that. Keep it that size, 
I don't think I've got anything else that I can put on there. Let me try that. Yeah, it's not going to be enough, look. Um, try it that way, I suppose. Um, I just don't think it will be enough of what we actually need. Well, I don't know. I suppose every little bit helps. Okay. Then we're going to cut out. Yeah, that one. That's that's all right. Okay. So we're going to cut. I think we want to go down like that. And then we're gonna. No, we're gonna keep that that sauce. Um, very indecisive about this one. I really am. I'm not sure what really I want to be doing. Okay, let's turn that over to this one. Roof marks on it. Okay, right, so this is what we've got, so I'm going to take it down like that, so I'm going to bring the top in, yeah, that I think that will work, so we are going to do it, so that's being gathered in at the top, so really we want to go for this sort of angle, so we're going to go this sort of angle, because we want it to come sweep down like that because we're going to kind of fold that bit there so I might cut that bit off I don't think we need it I've probably just made a monumental error you never know but we'll, we'll give it a go Remember you're scoring, not cutting. All right, this one I'm going to have to do the back on it because you can see it from both sides. Obviously, if you were doing like a one-sided one where it was let down, that it wouldn't be an issue. You could probably get away with just doing the one side, but that's not what we want to be doing today. So just gently sort of get the bits that are sticking up you'll see what I mean when you look at it right so now we need our tool to lift it because it'll be stuck solid and we're going to turn it over and do the same again so just gently pushing it down this side we don't want to take out marks on the other side that we've made okay. I don't worry too much about the other side as long as there's some marks in it like so There we go. Okay. Right, so I'm going to try to oh, it's quite big. That's okay. Right, let's try and um Lines missing, so I'm just going to put a few extras back in. It's already pretty much marked. I just want to re re score a couple. Okay. 
I just want to just do some gentle just here and there so like that like that like that so they're like every now and again pleats you don't want them too many of them okay and then we're going to start at the top here and then take it no it's not sitting either I'm really stuck on this bit ladies and gentlemen all right let's try it doing it and that might not even work either we're getting smaller and smaller all right let's try that starting that way I know what I want to achieve, which I will get there, is just figure it out. That's better. That's what we're after. That's it. That's it, there we go. Okay, and I'll hold that up to the, the screen. So if you can see now, I just kind of wanted it to sort of flow downwards. I didn't want, but I I, I wanted it to flow. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely happy with that now. Okay, so before you go to the oven, just make sure he's central which it's kind of central it doesn't matter it's flowing that's all you want if you wanted to put a few of your lines back in if you've lost them do so <coughs> obviously this isn't an ideal way of doing it but you can get some some new lines back in Okay. Even just sort of scoring over your old ones. Okay. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Okay, now before we put him in the oven and we do part two of this film, we are going to put his eyes in, not his eyes as such, but his eye holes. There we go. Right, now his eye holes, if you sit him so he's looking at you, see, I keep touching it now. Now if you see him so he's looking at you, straight in front, what you want is a medium sized ball tool and you're going to go about there. Go quite deep and try and even it up the other side so you get it in the same place without pulling on his, without touching his um, mane. Okay, so... So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Try and sweep out any sort of lumps and bumps. And try and sort of stick his hair down a little bit so that when he comes and goes in the oven, Like so. Then he's all your fins and everything are all whether you want them and that. Like so. And then if I show you what I've got. So I've just put his eyes in each side. I haven't actually put them in, I've just put holes there. Oh, why 
I think I might put a little bit on his top. I'm so indecisive. It's unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. I'm terrible. But that's how I like to work. I don't like to plan too much ahead. I like to be quite spontaneous. I don't do planning as such. And then it'll either work or it doesn't. And then if it doesn't, I'll look at it and try and figure out a different way of doing it. But that works for me. I mean, you might like to plan yours. That's okay. It's just planning's not so much for me. I like to be off the cuff, if you like. I'm going to cut that off so it's quite low. Yeah, I like that pal. Coming up onto his forehead a little bit more. Yeah, that's lovely. And just kind of squeeze it together with the other one. And then it will just look like one piece. If you can, just here and there, just sort of roll your, your tool over him. Remember, you don't have to have one of these tools. You can use a... Um, a cocktail stick will work just as well. And then we'll just make sure it's sort of sway, flowy looking. So bending it in certain ways and all over the place. And coming forward perhaps a little bit. Okay. So there you have it. He is red. Oh, sorry. He is ready go in the oven. So that's the end of part one ladies and gentlemen. I've made a mess everywhere. Um, do have a go um, and do watch part two where we will have a little look at doing the rest of him. His eyes, some horns, some ears, if you want ears on him. It is entirely up to you. This is why I like these. They're really fun. Um, there's no hard and fast rules about it. That's really pretty, isn't it? Um, no hard and fast rules. You do what you like. And I certainly like to do what I want. So, please hit that subscribe button. Every time then I release a video, you'll get a notification. And I will release number two video, part two, in the next, probably tomorrow. Okay, so please, oh, you can't even see him. Please do look out for him. And um, thank you for watching. Enjoy. Hit that subscribe button.